let's take a look at bearings. So the bearing of one point from a second point is a way of giving the direction. The diagram shows two points over here, A and B, and the north-south line through point A. So here's my point A. I'm going to have my north-south line is coming straight through there. And then I have point B on the outside. The bearing of B from A is the measure of the angle of directly north going to point A, which is going to be the point at the origin. If I look at this as a Cartesian plane, going to the point of B. So north to A to B gives me this angle here. The bearings are always going to be measured from north in a clockwise direction. So here, the diagrams show the bearing, of course, for several aircraft. So this would be a bearing of 60 degrees going from north to the origin to the other point. This would be a bearing of 240 degrees. This would be a bearing of 340 degrees. So if we're putting it into practice, we're going to say that two aircraft, A and B, leave an airport at the same time. Aircraft A flies on a course of 90 degrees, or a bearing of 90 degrees, at 700 kilometers per hour, and aircraft B flies at a course of 290 degrees at 600 kilometers per hour. Calculate the distance each aircraft travels in 12 minutes. Well, minutes, if I want to do the proper conversion, 12 minutes is going to be how much in an hour? It's going to be 12 over 60 minutes in an hour, and that's how many hours. I'm going to multiply that by the speed. And let's do it for A first. The speed that A was traveling at was 700 kilometers per hour which means that aircraft A traveled 140 kilometers. Aircraft B traveled for the same amount of time, 12 over 60 hours, multiplied by the speed of 600 kilometers per hour, and this one wound up traveling 120 kilometers. First, we're going to draw a diagram to show the positions of the aircraft and calculate how far apart they are to the nearest kilometer. So first, I'm going to draw my north-south, east-west grid lines, always stating that heading straight up is going to be north. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw for A. Well, A, it said it was on course of 90 degree angle, which means that if I go 90 degree from true north, then A headed out a distance of 140 straight east if it's a 90 degree angle. For B, B traveled at 290 degree angle, which means that if I started up at the top, then I have 90, then this is going to be at 180, this is going to be at 270, and it's going to be a little bit past that. And I'm going to say that B traveled out, and in this case, he traveled a distance of 120 kilometers. Well, if I know that all the way around there is 290, then if I want to finish off going to 360, I would say 360 minus 290, well, this is going to be an angle in here of 
70 degrees. And then I can just fill in the missing space to say, well, this is, actually, let's do some blue. This is the missing distance that we're trying to solve. So if I'm just looking at my triangle, then what do I actually know? Well, I know just for the triangle, I have the side length of A is going to be 140. The side length over here, sorry, that was point B, is going to be 120. And the angle in here is going to be a 90 degree angle here and a 70 degree angle here, which means that the total angle inside this triangle or this obtuse angle is going to wind up being 90 plus 70 which means that I have an angle of 160 degrees. So I have two side lengths. I have the angle in between them, and I want to solve for this length, which means I'm going to have to use my cosine law. So I'm going to say that x squared is going to equal 120 squared plus 140 squared minus 2 times 120 times 140 cos of 160. x squared is going to equal approximately 65,573.67 kilometers and I'm gonna have to take the square root of both sides. So x to the nearest whole kilometer is going to be 256 kilometers and there's my solution.